Good morning, church. It's good to see you on this chilly second Sunday in Lent. It is a communion Sunday, so we begin our service with the youngsters downstairs. I see they've all migrated already, and they will be joining us later for the service of communion. We do have some announcements before we begin our service today. First, I'd like to thank those who are assisting me in leading our service today for Darren and Valerie serving as our deacons, for Judy, our reader, for Brian, our tech support person, for Denise, our Sunday school leader, and we're grateful for uh, all the musicians who are leading us today, for Bruce and Joyce, Nare and the choir. So thank you all for leading us in our time of worship. We did have a newsletter that came out this week. I encourage you to take a look at your email. If you haven't done so, uh, you'll find your newsletter in there. Or if you receive a paper copy, know that that came in the mail. We do have additional copies at the back of the sanctuary that you can pick up on your way out. I do want to encourage you all to participate in our Lenten study series, which is beginning this Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. We have a series called Breaking Free about slavery and salvation right here in Stoneham. We'll learn about our church's history as it relates to slavery and anti-slavery efforts, as well as the current efforts of our church and denomination to address the issues of racial injustice in the world. We're very grateful to have our conference minister joining us for our final session. So the Reverend Doral Goodwin will be coming up from Hartford to join us for the last Wednesday in March. Again, these are the Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. More information is in your bulletin. And now we will begin our time of worship. I invite you all to stand as you are able as we offer our call to worship. And, and just before that, in conjunction with Ken said about the series on, on Lent, uh, slavery series, I put up a display of papers, artifacts, uh, in conjunction with that in the cases out in the hallway. So if you go out that way, you can look in the glass cases and this display of what's, some of what's gonna be covered on the series. So now please join me in the call to worship. People of God, where do we put our trust? Where do we find wholeness and meaning? We lift, we lift up, up our, our eyes to the hills. hills. Our help, our help comes, comes from, from the creator of heaven and earth. earth. We are sons and daughters of Abraham and Sarah. We trust in God, who neither slumbers nor sleeps. We, we are followers of Jesus, Jesus who, proclaim who proclaim God's realm. God's realm. We, we are born, born of, the Spirit, of the Spirit, born, born from, above. from above. Our lives are a gift from God, who loves us. By the grace of God, we are born anew each day. God, God loved, loved the, world the world in, in the, the gift, gift of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Through, Through faith, faith in Christ, Christ we, receive we receive eternal, eternal life. life. And please join me in the unison prayer of invocation. Let the, the winds, winds of the, of the Spirit, Spirit blow, blow in our, our midst, midst today, loving, loving God. God. Let, Let us hear the sound and feel the power. Open, open our, our hearts in new, new ways to the to promise, promise of your healing, of your healing grace. grace. So, so we may be a blessing to one another and to your world. world. We need, we need courage, courage to, to face the challenges and struggles of life. We seek reassurance that you will be with us in our going out and our coming in. Strengthen our faith to withstand the trials and temptations that lead us away from a faithful journey with Christ. Amen. Our first hymn today is from the Red Pilgrim Hymnal. Number 14, the God of Abraham prays. Let us lift our voices in song.
please be seated. Spiritual ancestors, like Abraham, sensed God's call to leave behind the security of the familiar, to venture forward to new places God would show them. Others, like Nicodemus, were astonished by Jesus' call to rebirth in the spirit, reminded that both calls come also to us. We bow before God to confess our own unfaithfulness. I invite you to join with me in our unison prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess we have been far more ready to say we believe than to trust you to lead us to new ventures of faithfulness. We are afraid of the evils that surround us. We fear rejection, failure, and ridicule. We admire Jesus, but it is difficult to follow in footsteps that lead to a cross. In the midst of life as we know it here, how can we catch glimpses of eternity? Save us, we pray, from our timidity, and use our doubts as an entry to deeper faith, Amen. Our lives are in God's hands. We can only glimpse the mystery of the source of love, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Yet as we look up in trust, there comes to us an abiding assurance that we are not alone. Friends, receive with humility and joy the rebirth God offers this day and for all eternity. Hear this good news. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Uh, the first scripture reading today comes from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed, departed from Haran. Thank you, Judy. Our gospel lesson today comes to us from the third chapter of the gospel according to John. Listen for God's message. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. 
What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. These words are breathed into us by the Holy Spirit.
to you choir. For God so loved the world. These words from today's reading of John's Gospel are some of the most beautiful words of our scriptures. They were words that I had to memorize when I was a youngster. Growing up in a church that emphasized the memorization of Bible verses, this was the first verse that I ever memorized. I grew up in a church where we did a lot of memorization. One of my friends had to memorize the whole book of John from beginning to end when he was a, a high school student. I never got that far. <laughs> but I still remember that verse, John 3, 16. And there are good words to remember as well. There are good words to remember when facing difficulties in life, that God so loves us. There are words I remember when I see football games and someone's in the end zone and holds up a sign, says John 3:16. Well, they're good words that we should be reminded of during football games or any other time. Because it's always good to be reminded of God's love for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Unfortunately, many who quote these verses often do so not in celebration of God's amazing love for people, but they do so as part of a plan to get people to agree that Jesus is God's son so that they can get saved and avoid spending eternity roasting in the afterlife. As though making this simple intellectual agreement is the sole requirement for avoiding a fiery fate. Well, I have come to believe that believing in Jesus means a lot more than just agreeing to some theological point, that Jesus is God's son. No, believing, as it always does in our scriptures, means to trust, to be active in faith, which is not a one-time deal. It's a lifelong practice. And it is this practice of trust, trusting in God's love as revealed through Christ that brings life that does not perish and that can save the world. Well, in our reading from John, which is the first of several lessons from the fourth gospel that we'll be hearing from in the coming weeks, we find Jesus having a conversation with a Pharisee, a Jewish leader named Nicodemus, who comes to Jesus at night, likely so that no one would witness him hanging out with Jesus. Well, they have a secret conversation that includes the good words about belief and salvation that we've just focused on, and a bigger conversation about the need to be born again, or born from above, or born of the Spirit. And these are things that are all integral to the experience of trusting God that brings imperishable life. The good news that Jesus offers Nick at night is that because God so loves the world, we are given opportunities to be made new, made new in spirit. And likewise, because God loves us, our world can experience new birth. Well, the story of God's saving love for people was not new to the day or the night of Jesus and Nicodemus. It was an old, old story. It's been told many times and in many ways by the ancestors of Jesus and Nicodemus. And our first reading from Genesis offers us one such story. In it we find Abram, later named Abraham, 
embarking upon a journey as God had called him. He was then living somewhere in Mesopotamia, but he was called to leave that place, the place of his ancestors, to leave the ways of worshiping the many gods of his ancestors, and to go to a new place where the one unseen God would lead him. And God promised Abram that on the way, God would bless him. God would bless his family. Indeed, God would bless all the families of the world through him. Abram trusted God, and he went on his journey, beginning a new life that would indeed bring God's blessing to all the world's people. All because God so loved the world. Because God so loved the world, the brokenness of Eden was not the end of the story of God and people living together. Because God so loved the world, the wickedness of the world's people that was washed away in a flood was not the end of the story between God and people. Because God so loved the world, chaos and confusion of Babel was not the final word either. From the place of brokenness and chaos, God called a family to begin a new journey to replace the curse that people had experienced, living in ways that led them to death, and to replace that curse with the blessings of ways of living that lead to life. And the story of the Bible is the story of that journey towards life, the journey that leads to salvation. Friends, the good news that we celebrate this morning is that God still loves the world. God still loves all the descendants of Abram and Sarai who claim them as spiritual ancestors. God still calls the children of Abraham and Sarah to go in faith on journeys that lead from brokenness and toward life. God loves us and calls us, and God enables us to be made new in spirit by venturing out in faith. God loves us and blesses us and calls us to carry on the family business of blessing the world's people. We are called to the work of helping the world be blessed by being born again. As followers of Christ on this communion Sundays, where we take in a symbol of Christ, we take in not only his message, but his work. We make the work of Jesus our own work. His task of bringing salvation becomes our task of working towards salvation for the world. And so we work to make the world new. We offer our messages of love to displace the many messages of hate that we hear. Our journey of faith leads us to continuing Christ's work of feeding the hungry, lifting the lowly, seeking justice for those who have been harmed by injustice. And again, I invite you to come to the sanctuary here on Wednesday, during we will learn more about injustice of slavery and how we as a church have acted and can act to address its still active and ugly legacy. And our active trust in Christ's sacrifice leads us to give of ourselves, to sacrifice our own talent, time, and our treasure to bless people in the world. I invite you all to come back here next Sunday to hear from a speaker from an organization called New Day, which is working through our working and supported by our board of missions in Syria to provide relief to those who are impacted by recent earthquakes. Our own journey of faith leads us to teach our children and our youth to follow Christ's way of selfless service. 
And again, I invite you to come back next Sunday, which is also Girl Scout Sunday, where you will learn about the good service of two of our Girl Scout troops who gather right here in our church. This is all part of our, our work, to bless the world. Well, God so loved the world. God so loves the world. God blesses us so that we can bless. This is our journey. This is our path. Let us embrace it anew in this Lenten season. Let us continue on the journey that leads toward newness for ourselves and for the world so that we can find more of God's life, more of God's imperishable, perfect life dwelling in our own hearts, today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. And now that you have endured the sermon, I invite you to stand as together we respond by singing, God made from one blood. This is in the black, New Century Hymnal, number 427. Please be seated. And as one family, united in faith, we have love for one another that we demonstrate by praying for each other. And we ask for you to be keeping in prayer all of the members of our congregation who are in any kind of need, for those who are ill this morning, those who are recovering from surgery, and especially those living with COVID. Does anybody have a joy or concern that they would like to bring to the congregation? I would like everyone to pray for my daughter's future mother-in-law, Lorraine, who is suffering from uh, terminal cancer. Prayers for Lorraine. I'd like everyone to pray for my husband, and I guess me. Um, he's going in for heart surgery on Tuesday, and we're hoping that this will help him finally um, 
go back to having a normal life. Prayers for Beverly and Mark. Does anybody else have a concern or a joy? When we went to Disney World, we had a wonderful time. Very good. <laughs> We're grateful that you have joy. We had so much fun. Very good. Does anybody else have a word? Prayers for uh, friends of mine, Barbara and Jerry Grant. Uh, I just talked to Jerry on Thursday night and found out that Barbara has been diagnosed with Parkinson's. So uh, they were long; they still are longtime friends. But just bless them as they go through this. Let us come to God now in a time of prayer. We thank you, living God, for the gift of faith. We thank you for inspiring faith of simple people who walk amidst the uncertainties with quiet dignity, for the faith of people of high status who, by childlike faith, walk humbly with you. We thank you for the faith of those with doubts who nevertheless commit themselves to the small faith they do hold. We thank you for the faith of those tentative souls who in a crisis discover that their trust in you is larger than they thought. Thank you for the faith of the kind-hearted who never seem to waver or question, yet do not deride those of shaky faith. We thank you for those special members of the church who have been your agents in increasing our faith. We thank you most of all for Jesus, who showed us how to live in faith. He worked in harmony with his love, and through his faithfulness has won for us a place in your eternal glory. We thank you for these gifts and for all your good and perfect extensions of grace. God of infinite wisdom and friendship, we ask that we may not squander this grace or our opportunities for increasing faith or for greater service. Please send the regenerating breath of the Spirit on all those for whom we now pray. To any of our elders who fear that they are no longer of use, to a friend, a neighbor, or even to you, send your Spirit and regenerate your people. To the young, especially those who are already setting their feet on a road that leads to self-destruction. Send your spirit and regenerate your people. To the timid who are afraid to launch out in faith and dare the slings and arrows of a selfish, skeptical community, send your spirit and regenerate your people. To the scarred who in the name of Christ have long fought against prejudice and injustice, now we're on the verge of giving up. Send your spirit and regenerate your people. To those who are sad, who after the death of a dear loved one cannot see much point in going on, send your spirit and regenerate your people. To those who grow weary in their never-ending work to serve you and serving their communities, send your spirit and regenerate your people. To these and all your people, O oh God, send the wind of your refreshing spirit and bring us into that robust and resilient faith which you alone can give us. We pray for grace to take your generous gifts and step in courage on this holy path, confident in the radiant life that is your plan for us, may known and given to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray all these things in his name. Amen.
Welcome back, youngsters and teachers. The faith that sustains us is not a commodity to be hoarded and protected. Rather, faith is an active, dynamic relationship which God calls us to share with one another, not just in the church, but with everyone. And our offerings make possible faithful ministries within the church, and also they make possible our outreach in the world. And so let us give generously. This morning's offering will now be received.
invite you to join with me in offering our unison prayer of dedication. Thank you, God, for the glimpses of eternity and the daily experiences of life. We are grateful for encounters that lift the horizons of our vision. We rejoice in the teaching and care you have provided to us. Bless now the gifts we return to you for the programs and outreach of the church. We want to share our faith with the world. We pray for the trustful relationships among all your children. We rejoice together in the saving ministry of Jesus that inspires us to give our best. Amen. Please be seated. We gather now from wherever we come from, whether it's from the youth room downstairs or from the sanctuary here, and wherever we've come from to be to these places this morning, from the north and the south and the east and the west, we've come together now as one family of faith. And we come to this table that is open to all of us, whether we are young or old, or somewhere in between, whether we have much faith or little faith, or are seeking faith, we come to this table because the gift is freely offered to all of us. As we begin to prepare our hearts for the receiving of communion, I invite you to sing the hymn of preparation that is found in your insert in the bulletin, One Bread, One Body.
May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. And let us pray. We thank you, O God, Holy One, always and everywhere with us. We thank you for all of your gifts, for your gift of life and love that all creatures of the earth enjoy. We thank you for making us in your image, and although we've rebelled against you, you remain our loving parent, claiming us as your own beloved children. We thank you for sending us Jesus, our brother, who showed us the way to life. We thank you for his obedience and for your raising him from the dead after he died on the cross. We praise you that he now reigns with you in glory. We thank you for the spirit that remains with us and leads us into living as you would have us live. We praise you for all these gifts. Amen. You remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, it is given for you. Eat of it as often as you do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and gave it to them saying, this is the new covenant in my blood Drink of this as often as you do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink of the cup, we remember Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we await Christ's coming again. Again, let us pray. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith as we remember Christ's life, his death, and his resurrection. Now your table is spread with these gifts, and we present them to you. We present them along with our very lives, committed to your service. We ask for you to send your spirit upon us. Fill us with your truth, that we may go from this place and do your work, being champions of peace and justice in all the world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, our teacher, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as we pass the bread around, you may take it and hold on to it. Once everyone is served, I will lead us in taking it together as a symbol of our shared covenant with one another and with God. We do have gluten-free wafers on the bread plate, so when they come around, you can grab one of those if you need gluten-free bread. And then we'll be passing the non-alcoholic grape juice around. And once you've received that, you can go ahead and consume it right away as a symbol of your own personal relationship with God. And now, friends, I invite you to come, for all is ready.
This is the body of Christ. And I invite you to pray with me our unison prayer of thanksgiving, as it is found in your bulletin. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is Part in Peace, which is found in the Black New Century Hymnal, number 78. I invite all who are able to stand.
ends as our service here in this room comes to an end. Your service outside goes on. As you go and serve, may God, who is your creator, and Christ, who is your redeemer, and may the Holy Spirit, who is your sustainer, go with you and grant you peace.